ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. This is James Spann with the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday morning, the third day of September. Beginning to see the summer slowly fade and fall coming on pretty strong here. And we've got the tropics going wild, but uh, so far no direct impact on Alabama anytime soon. Let's look at some Skycam images around the network this morning. We'll start with our Demopolis Skycam. Actually had a little rain there last night. A little feeder band around Gustav came through West Alabama about uh, 9 to 10 o'clock last night, but that's uh, long gone. That's the view looking to the east from the Demopolis Civic Center. In the Birmingham Metro, the look at uh, U.S. Highway 280. Early this morning, about 5 o'clock. Wouldn't it be nice if traffic was always that light out there? And from Chilton County, a look at downtown Clanton, where conditions are nice and quiet. Well, there's a look at uh, the water vapor satellite imagery this morning, and Gustav is still showing up nicely near Texarkana, just kind of hanging around. Got a, uh, a high over Kentucky that's kind of forcing that thing to sit there. It uh, will slowly be drifting north, and again, no real impact on our weather. All of the uh, rain should stay to the west again today. And by golly, we've still got a tornado watch out there this morning. Isn't that something? That's up until 7 o'clock this morning for parts of Louisiana and southwest Mississippi. That includes uh, Alexandria, Macomb, and places like that. Uh, I would love to know the number of tornado warnings issued by various weather service offices in the eastern quadrant of that thing, including uh, New Orleans, Jackson, Mobile, Memphis. There have been a bunch of them. I got a, a slight risk of severe weather today from that general region north up through a large part of Arkansas and southern Missouri. Day two, the risk shifts north up into uh, parts of western Kentucky southeastern Missouri, southern Illinois, and southwestern Indiana. And then on day three, which is Friday, got a risk up on the coast of the Carolinas in advance of Hannah. The next one coming up. And look at that. Isn't that something? We're just kind of missing the parade of rain in, in, in this case with uh, Gustav to the west and Hannah to the east. But remember, we had Fay. Many spots getting 10 inches of rain with Fay. We've had our turn. We're doing fine on rain. Birmingham has a six-inch rain surplus for the year. So the fact that it looks relatively dry for the next seven days, that's okay. This is valid through uh, Sunday evening at 7 o'clock. Here's a look at our systems. Gustav, Hannah, Ike, and Josephine. Hannah's really had a hard time. I mean, the shear has been eating this thing's eyeballs for breakfast. But, you know, the, the, while it looks horrible on satellite presentation, of course, we've got also the interaction with Haiti. Uh, the pressures have not really been rising that much. So uh, more than likely when the, the shear lessens later today and it gets away from that island, uh, it, it could grow stronger in a hurry. Modeling shifting to the right. Good news for Florida. Bad news for the Carolinas. Uh, the uh, models tend to bring this up into the Carolinas with landfall potentially uh, round or north now of, of Charleston, really between Charleston and Wilmington. And the uh, Hurricane Center track has been shifting slowly to the right as well. It's got it coming in around Charleston uh, Friday night as a minimal hurricane, a Category 1. Uh, and we'll just see what happens. I think the next 24 hours will tell the story is, is the shear will be lessening and it gets away from the Hispaniola. Could there be some rapid deepening? Not totally out of the question. We'll see. But again, remember, the worst of the weather will be along and right of that track. So uh, Florida should be okay. They'll be on the dry side. Uh, Georgia on the dry side. It's going to be a problem for the uh, plain, the coastal plain of the Carolinas and points northeast. Ike looks good. It's a good-looking storm out there uh, in the Atlantic. Sustained winds are estimated to be at 65. Modeling, pretty uh, good agreement. Uh, bring the thing toward the uh, Bahamas by the end of the weekend. And let me show you what the European does with it now. You know, yesterday morning at this time, or maybe yesterday, I forget when we show these, but the last time I showed you this, the European had Ike as a Gulf of Mexico storm. Well, the latest run now has it as an East Coast storm. 
Instead of coming through the Florida Straits, it's got it coming up and threatening the Atlantic coast of the U.S. Just to let you know, we've had a little model shift on that. In the long term, the official track brings Ike to a point uh, kind of between Havana and Nassau at the end of the weekend, late Sunday night. Will it turn north up toward the Atlantic coast or come into the Gulf? Don't know yet, but again, the latest European suggesting this might be an Atlantic storm. And old Joe out there, Josephine, in the far eastern Atlantic. Uh, modeling shows a general northwest motion, as does the Hurricane Center. They keep it a tropical storm for the next five days because of uh, the, the shearing environment out there. And again, it's going to be coming up into some water churned up and upwelled by Ike. But plenty of time to watch that. Here's the GFS at 1 o'clock today. This is at about 18,000 feet off the ground, better known as the 500 millibar standard level. Uh, the westerlies are still up north, and you can see uh, Gustav and Hannah there. Gustav still producing heavy rain today west of Alabama, Mississippi, West Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, South Missouri. Hannah trying to get her act together. Tomorrow, Hannah begins to move to the northwest. Hey, Gustav finally moves away from Texarkana, moves up toward uh, St. Louis. Chicago will get some good rain thanks to Gustav tomorrow. And around here, still mostly dry. Any showers would seem to be on the western side. Friday, uh, the GFS, like other models, shifting to the uh, uh, right on Hannah, has it well to the east of Florida now. They can breathe easier in Daytona and Jacksonville. Of course, Saturday starting off the weekend, just wanted to show you the westerlies are beginning to drop south. Look at that big polar vortex up north. Uh, we'll look at the uh, surface chart, cold air over northern Canada. Awfully chilly for this time of the year. Uh, Saturday at 1 o'clock, the uh, model has Hannah kind of coming up into the middle Atlantic coast region. Still a pretty formidable system. Uh, looks like it. Uh, the GFS wants to bring it up toward Wilmington, then kind of hugging the coast up there toward Ch Chesapeake Bay. Model does suggest a little sliver of moisture here, maybe a few scattered showers around Saturday. And Sunday, we go totally dry. Hannah kicks out over the Canadian Maritimes. And uh, you can see Ike down there near the Bahamas, the southeast Bahamas. Monday, the GFS kind of loses Ike. Uh, we're dry as a bone. Tuesday of next week, we stay dry front to the north. And Wednesday, a week from today, again, the, the GFS just doesn't handle Ike at all. It's got a front easing in here from the north, a nice high over uh, New York up there. And again, we'll just have to see where Ike winds up. Into the forecast period, the 18th of September, the, by golly, we've still got ridging. Come on now. We're looking for a good trough to blow a Canadian polar front down this way. But uh, that's not going to happen. That looks a little more like summertime instead of uh, uh, autumn at that point. But again, as we always say, we're just peeking out there. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the weather blog, alabamawx.com. The next video here by 3.30 today. And, of course, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 5, 6, and 10. Again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.